Tomatoes are grown in more gardens than any other food crop. For many of us, it is our favorite plant to grow in our vegetable garden. To get bigger fruit and better harvests, there are some things you need to be aware of. So join me today as I share with you 10 tips to get fantastic tomatoes. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I've been growing tomatoes in my gardens for as long as I've been gardening, well over 30 years. And I've had good years and I've had bad years. And there have been times that I really didn't know why my tomatoes didn't do as well as I thought they should. Over time, I've learned how to get the best tomatoes that I can. And there are just a few things that we need to do right. The idea is basically to make a happy plant. A happy tomato plant will grow delicious tomatoes. It's tomato planting time in my Colorado garden, and some of these beautiful tomato plants are finally going into the ground. And I've been waiting a long time for this because I don't transplant my tomatoes based on a calendar date. This leads us to the first tip. Transplant your tomatoes based on temperature. This black creme tomato plant is looking for some very specific temperatures for it to be happy and to grow the best that it can. The nighttime temperatures should be at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 10 degrees Celsius, on a consistent basis. And the daytime temperatures should be in a range of 70 degrees to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. This plant will grow best in those conditions. Those temperatures are also important because the soil needs specific temperatures as well. We're looking for a soil temperature range of at least 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. My soil temperature is still too cool to get the best results. I could put these tomatoes in the ground right now with my soil temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but I run the risk of adding extra transplant shock with the roots that are going to be at that cool temperature. It could stunt the growth of the plant, and that can affect how well the plant will grow in the future. My greenhouse soil temperature is already at the bottom of that desired range. So I went ahead and transplanted a few of my plants and they're already doing quite well after just a week. Already starting to set some flowers and I can expect fruit pretty soon. Though it's still a little too cool here in Colorado for me to put my plants outside, my soil is ready to go. And that's tip number two. Have your soil amended and ready for your tomato plants long before you ever start the transplanting. Tomatoes like a rich, well-draining soil. And the best way to get that kind of soil is to amend it months before planting. I amended this bed last fall. It's had all fall, all winter, and now early spring for the soil microbes to spring to life and make all of the nutrients that are held within the organic matter in the soil available for my tomato plants. A good, rich soil will give those plants the best start that they can have. I prepare my soil in advance of transplanting and I prepare my plants in advance of transplanting through the process of hardening off. And that's tip number three. You should harden off your tomato plants for the best results. The process of hardening off is getting these plants conditioned to the outdoor weather that they're going to be growing in. I grew all of these plants from seed in a sheltered indoor spot. And chances are, if you buy tomato plants from a nursery or a garden center, they've also been growing in a sheltered environment. If you throw them directly outdoors on day one, the harsh sun and the cool nights and the wind and whatever other weather you have could dramatically affect how these plants grow. So by conditioning them over a period of days, they'll be ready for transplanting. Now, 
these are hardened off. I've been doing this outside on a table on my deck for over a week now. They're indoors in my greenhouse just waiting for the temperatures to be right, but they're strong, they're sturdy. They can handle just about any weather that mother nature throws at them. This next tip is important for experienced gardeners, but especially important for new gardeners. And that's to know whether your tomato plant is determinant or indeterminate, because those two types will grow differently. And you can't tell by looking at a plant this size ready for transplant. They'll all look the same. So you need to know before you put the plant in the ground whether it's determinate or indeterminate. A determinate tomato plant tends to grow bushy. It'll put its flowers and its fruit on all within a relatively short period of time, which means you can get a big harvest all at once. Whereas an indeterminate tomato plant is more like a vine. It keeps growing and growing. It'll set some flowers and fruit, and then as it grows, it'll set more flowers and fruit. And so you'll get a harvest over a much longer period of time. It's important to know the difference because you might want to put them in different areas of your garden and grow them differently based on the type of tomato they are. And the biggest factor in determining where you're going to grow your tomatoes is the sun. And that's the next tip, is to put your tomatoes in the sunniest spot you have in your garden. You may have heard that plants need at least six hours of sunlight a day. For tomatoes, I would say they should have at least eight hours of sunlight a day, and more is better. Some of the tomatoes, like cherry tomatoes, can get by with a little bit less sun, but if you're growing the big beefsteak varieties, they're going to need a lot of sun for the energy to get those plants to grow big. This bed in the center of my garden has full sunlight, so this year, this is going to be one of the spots that I grow my tomatoes because I can give them the maximum amount of light and heat during my growing season. This next tip is pretty common and you've probably heard it and it's to plant your tomatoes deep. But you don't always need to do that. The idea is that tomato plants are one of the few plants that will grow roots all the way along the stem. So if you dig a deep hole and put the tomato plant in with just the upper leaves exposed, all of this lower stem will grow roots and you can have a big robust root system. The issue with that is it works quite well, but if you have a short growing season, you're setting this plant back. It's going to take time for these upper leaves to grow, and then for the plant to grow, and then for the flowers and fruit to set. You'll have great roots, but you might not have enough time in the season to get the biggest harvest. Instead, especially if you have a plant with good roots already, and I can see roots coming out the bottom of this pot, I can transplant this not so deeply. The plant will start growing right away, and I can expect, like in my greenhouse, a relatively small plant to set flowers and fruit long before one that I plant much deeper. The next tip is to trellis your tomato plants, and this is particularly true for the indeterminate plants that are going to grow tall. This is my favorite trellis that I use in my raised beds made out of cattle panel. It's about six feet tall, ample size for my plants to grow up it. I use twine to train the tomato plants up and into this trellis. This bed is set up with a Florida weave trellis where the tomato plants will weave up through the twine that's lying horizontally. In the beds behind me, I use twine that's tied to the fence along that back wall. That's a great way to direct my tomato plants to grow. The reason we're trellising is because we want the tomato plants to grow vertically. That means we can grow more plants in a given space. It also ensures we have better air circulation with the branches that are spreading up and out and not just across the ground. That cuts down on a lot of potential issues with tomato diseases. So growing up and out and in the air and light 
is really the best way to grow tomatoes. You also want to prune your tomato plants, cutting off some of the branches as they grow and some of the leaves, especially on an indeterminate tomato plant like this black creme. In the little crooks between the leaves and the stem, a new branch is going to grow and it can grow quite tall and long until the plant dies. That can be a good thing, but if you just let it run rampant, the plant can become overwhelming pretty quickly, even when you use a trellis. So consider pinching off or cutting off those suckers as they appear. With this plant, this black cream, by the time it is growing big and producing, all of these lower branches will be pruned off. I need that extra air circulation to cut down on the potential disease. So once the plant is bigger, these lower branches aren't needed anymore because these are the leaves and the branches that are most susceptible to tomato disease. For determinant plants, you really don't want to do as much pruning. Remember, they're going to set flowers and fruit in a pretty brief period of time. You're not going to have that sustained growth. So reduce the amount of pruning on a determinant plant so that you can get a lot of branches and a lot of flowers and a lot of fruit. If you're benefiting from this video, be sure and hit the like button below and stick around to the end for a bonus tip. This next tip involves watering. You should water your tomato plants consistently. The key is that your soil is always evenly moist. If the soil is allowed to dry out or if it gets too wet, you're going to see problems with your tomatoes. If you've ever harvested a tomato and it was cracked, chances are it had a big inrush of water all at once. It might have been dry soil, it got all the water, it sucked it up through the plant and that fruit just couldn't contain it, so it cracked. To avoid that, you want consistently moist soil. You may have had problems with blossom end rot. Blossom end rot, which is a dark brown or black portion at the base of the fruit, is caused by calcium deficiency. Almost all soil on the planet has enough calcium to grow tomatoes, but the soil needs to be moist for those roots to absorb the calcium. By letting it get too dry or too wet, you're keeping the roots from doing their job. So you may need to water every morning or every evening or in a dry region like mine, sometimes it's twice a day to ensure your soil is consistently moist. And I get down with my finger and check, dig a little hole and see how deep down that soil is moist. It might be moist in just the upper couple inches, but that's not where the roots are. The roots are down deep. Make sure you water regularly and deeply for the best tomatoes. This next tip hopefully will help you avoid a very common problem that gardeners have when growing tomatoes. Don't over fertilize your plants. I see a lot of advice out there that says to fertilize every two weeks and Often it just leaves it at that without telling what kind of fertilizer to use. The reason to avoid over fertilization is because a lot of the fertilizers we're using are high in nitrogen. And especially if you're fertilizing on a regular basis like that, the plant just gets too much nitrogen. It's going to grow big and green, but it's not going to set the flower and the fruit that you want on that plant. The nitrogen is growing a big plant, but you need the phosphorus and the potassium for the plant to really produce well. That's the second and the third number in a bag of fertilizer. So if you do need a fertilizer, look for something like a 5-10-5. That means it's higher in phosphorus than it is in nitrogen. A big problem in the tomato growing industry is that the tomato fertilizers are all over the map. The numbers are low and high. I prefer to amend my soil with organic matter to make it nice and rich, and I use very little fertilizer at all. If I do use fertilizer, it's something like a 5-10-5 right at planting. And then again, 
real close to the time that the plant is beginning to fruit. You really don't need fertilizer throughout the season. First, learn about your soil and whether it needs any extra nutrients at all, and then you can target the nutrients it might be deficient in. I promised you a bonus tip, and here it is. Harvest your fruit when it's ready. And it's not as easy as it sounds. Not all tomatoes are red. You need to know about the plant you're growing. This black creme doesn't produce a red tomato. And the tops of the tomato, when it's ripe, will be green. By understanding what you're growing, you can look for the proper color of your fruit. But even then, that's not enough. You might need to go in and just squeeze the fruit slightly while it's still on the plant. It should be firm, but can give a little bit. That tells that the flesh inside is a little bit soft and it's probably time to harvest. Go ahead and pick a tomato off and taste it if you're unsure before you get to the big harvest. If it tastes like you expect, then continue with the harvest. And by harvesting your fruit, you will stimulate the plant to produce more flowers and fruit, particularly in the indeterminate varieties. So harvest when it's ripe, keep harvesting, and you can expect a lot more delicious tomatoes on those plants that you've grown and gotten the fantastic crops. To learn more about growing tomatoes, we'll go ahead and click on one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.